Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I am really excited about this fragrance. This is a fragrance that I recently acquired. You guys already know what it is because you read the title down below. The fragrance goes by the name Olmsted and Vaux. Um, I recently came across this brand. What happened was uh, one of the people who work over at Fleur got in contact with me and she said, I want to tell you a little bit about my brand. And it's a it's a really cool brand because it's a digital only brand. What that translates to is you cannot buy these fragrances in stores. So you have to go online. They show you some pictures and some some writings that correspond and correlate to each fragrance. And then they understand that fragrance is very subjective. It's very personal. It's much more than a list of notes. And uh, I remember when I was corresponding with this lady, I go, so are you going to send me a sample of every fragrance from the line? And she goes, no, I want you to go online and I want you to experience it the same way that, I that a consumer would experience it. And I said, okay, fine. So I navigated the website a little bit and I came across two fragrances that sounded really intriguing. They were Hepcat and this one, Olmsted and Vaux. And I'm really glad that I did it that route because I am in love with this fragrance. As a matter of fact, if I had the opportunity to go back in time and refilm my top 10 favorite niche fragrances for 2016, the summer list, this would definitely be in the list. Um, so this fragrance, 2016 released, it was uh, composed by Natalie Benero who did three fragrances for this company. And the name of this one, Olmsted & Vaux, it actually refers to the architects who designed Central Park. Um, I believe it was built or designed, excuse me, in the late 1800s. And there's even a, a, a street that transverses Central Park. And it uh, goes, it stretches from East 72nd Street to West 72nd Street. And it's called Olmsted & Vaux Way. And a, another thing that correlates to it is on the bottom of the bottle, they have some coordinates on there. And I believe that may be uh, Central Park's coordinates, which is a really cool concept. I'm excited to tell you guys about this one. Lastly, it's classified as an aromatic green fragrance. And let's go ahead and kick things off by taking a look at the presentation. Here on the box, you have the name of the fragrance here on the front, written sideways, the concentration eau de parfum, ingredients and other information at the bottom. The uh, Fleur logo on the back, it is printed in there, punched in there, and pretty simple box. Here you have the bottle, really nice bottle. You have the logo here on the front, magnetic cap, just like all of the uh, Dior Privés and Dior Sauvage, awesome. And then you have Fleur written on the perimeter of the bottle. Overall, really nice presentation. On the bottom here, you have your serial number, or what I would guess is your serial number up here at the top. And uh, that's pretty much it, where it's manufactured, so on and so forth, and the website. Let's take a look at the atomizer. Good distribution, but very quick, short spurts. Top of the cap, you have the Fleur logo in there once again. And that was the presentation for Olmsted & Vaux by Fleur. Now, this fragrance is pretty vague in its note breakdown. When you go on Fragrantica, it says green notes and woodsy notes. That's all. And yes, you do get some green notes in there. It doesn't smell particularly grassy, but if the influence or inspiration behind this fragrance is Central Park, I think they did a really good job with that. It does open up with a lot of citrus, uh, which lends way to this fragrance changing a lot uh, because the citrus, unfortunately, does have a high rate of volatility, so it does change on your skin. So this is a fragrance that you really need to spend time with. It opens up with some sort of, I hate to use the word generic, but it doesn't have a characteristic of lime or orange or neroli. It smells more like a bergamot note, but it is one of the nicest citrus fragrances I have ever smelled. It's really well done the perfect adjective that I would use to describe this fragrance is realistic this is in the same family or it could share the stage with fragrances like Bergamot 22 by Le Labo, uh, Eau de Tali's Aqua Decima, Zerzhov's Neo I mean it's that good of a citrus scent and I would highly urge my uh, subscribers if you are a fan of citrus fragrances at least get a sample of it and give it a try and see if you like it. Yes, there is a green element to it and it's much more than like a grassy element, which like I said, I don't get a lot of. It comes across to me more of like an herbal nuance, something that I would 
equate to maybe clary sage or something like that it's a wonderful fragrance definitely give it a shot it will even lend you a compliment or two again my only point of contention is the performance uh, you're going to get about five to six hours uh, which is a little under par but nonetheless it's a wonderful wonderful scent and one that i would love to reapply and i have reapplied the times that i have worn this scent so i'm excited to tell you guys when you can wear it how long it will project and all that other technical stuff so let's go ahead and finish things off by taking a look at the rating first up i took a look at the perfume's uniqueness and overall smell and the overall smell needless to say, is incredibly pleasant. I love citrus-based fragrances, and this one does have a little oomph to it because it has a green quality in the background, some aromatics, some spices, so definitely make sure to give this one a try. The citrus in here is done differently, and I think that's one of the things that really impressed me about this scent is that citrus is ubiquitous in perfumes. It's omnipresent, it's everywhere. So in this scent, for it to utilize citrus like bergamot or whatever it is, and to do it so differently, that definitely earns a couple thumbs up in my book. Longevity on this one, again, not that great. You're gonna get maybe four to five hours. There are days when I've gotten upwards of six hours, which is okay, but this one becomes more of like a close encounter type of a scent um, and it is a pleasant scent so no matter where and when you wear it you're gonna smell good it's one of the reasons why I love citrus based fragrances is because I feel great wearing it no matter where I go I mean there's a casual nuance to it but there is a refinement in the citrus that would allow you to wear this one dressed up this is um, I think more conducive to summertime wear just because the composition is evocative of the summertime, but like I said, you as long as you're in a climate controlled environment, you can really wear it whenever you want. I'm not gonna put an age range on this, and this is a unisex scent. And last up, we have the presentation. In addition to just the bottle in the box, the presentation also includes the company, their delivery, and this being a digital uh, based company and everything that they have to offer on their website and I just think it's a really cool concept It's aptly named the scent is amazing. Listen if I'm gonna give this fragrance an overall score I'm gonna give it a four out of five stars. I love this fragrance. I think it's a wonderful citrus based fragrance It does things differently. It deviates from the norm without necessarily pushing the envelope It's a really appealing scent and I really like what this company has to offer really cool concept I'm really excited to sampling the other fragrances in this line I've only sampled the two but it just leaves me with a great deal of excitement to see what else they have to offer So guys, thank you so much for tuning in That was my review of Olmsted and Vogue by Fleur If you own or have tried the scent, please let me know what you think Leave a comment down below Also, please don't forget to subscribe for future videos, top 10s, giveaways, unboxings, and a lot of other fragrance-related content. So remember, I smell well so you can smell good, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.